This video is sponsored by Paperlike. And we're live in three, two. Breaking news, people of the internet, Apple have just released their latest iPads and it's disrupting the industry to the point that people no longer need a computer anymore. Uh, did, you, did you fact check this? With all the intensive research I've conducted... Uh, you mean Reddit? <coughs> people are transitioning to their iPad as their main working tool to the point that gaming on it yields great gaming performance. There's quite a bit of like... Wait, really? Yeah, especially when all the apps are on, it's just... <sighs> oh, and you can actually do some front-end web development on it? I don't think so. Edit YouTube videos? Not too sure. And actually, you can do Excel and replace it as your main tool for accountants. I wouldn't recommend it. You know what, man? We're changing topics. Oh, and by the way, you're fired. Oh. I read a very good analogy the other day on Reddit that goes back to this very main topic. Is my iPhone XS Max a Nikon D3300 replacement? Technically, no. The same can be said with both the iPad and a computer. On the iPhone, it's the only camera you can actually use 99% of the time. You, of course, compromise some things within your photography, just like the fact that giving up a Mac will compromise the ability to have a proper file system, an OS you can interact with at its core, download proper apps, and so on. But due to battery, connectivity, and size limitations, a lot of people prefer to carry an iPad with them when going places. I've been bringing this home at night to answer emails and it does the job. However, I wanted to make a video that would allow me to dive deeper into it to see if it can truly replace your computer. So here's what I've concluded after some extensive research. It's no surprise that like any computer, iPadOS genuinely allows you to connect peripherals, things that can sustain a desktop replacement, including having a proper set of speakers on your setup. You can also connect it to a monitor, use a dedicated stand to put the tablet on the desk, bring in a keyboard to pair it with your favorite mouse, and even go to the extent of connecting the Magic Trackpad 2 to iPadOS. To mimic proper I.O. functionality, the tablet can be connected to a proper hub, and it doesn't need to be a dongle. You can definitely connect something like the Cal Digit to it so you can enjoy the variety of ports this delivers. So if you are someone that enjoys physically connecting to the internet, a hub like such can be a good purchase. Just remember that for Thunderbolt, a dock or a hub can only work on iPads that support it, which is why on the iPad Air 5 you cannot connect your Apple Studio display directly to these. But don't worry, if you have a regular display with HDMI or DisplayPort, you can connect all your peripherals to it, meaning that you can also connect wireless peripherals, USB keys, SSD drives, and even a mechanical keyboard if you wish, but there are limitations to such things. Look, a very easy example would be what if you'd like to remap your MX Master buttons for a better workflow? Well, Logitech Options, the dedicated desktop app, isn't available on iPadOS. The same thing can be said about Via if you enjoy remapping your mechanical keyboard within your desktop computer. As fun as it is having all of these peripherals connected, navigating files for all of your storage devices isn't as easy as a laptop or a desktop. Files is just an app for storing files, not a system file management. The repercussions of that result in not being able to have a command line interface as we do on desktop computers. And so this is where overall the iPad really starts to struggle with more complex tasks. But I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't say that I love how easy it is to get up and running with it. Opening it up, things happen right away. It allows you to get up and running very quickly as opposed to a laptop or a desktop. There's no need to worry about thermals and heat dissipation when throwing it in a bag. You can leave it on and no need to close any of the apps you were using prior. Now that most of their lineup is equipped with M1 and 8GB of RAM, iPadOS can handle a fair amount of applications running in the background. And this sort of stuff for students and teachers makes it a perfect daily. My dad is a college professor and I've been trying to push him to give lectures on the iPad. I remember back in my information system security class, our teacher would simply use his 8th gen iPad to connect it to a projector so he could use Notability as a drawing board. 
When he needed a PDF or a PowerPoint, he would simply access them through Google Drive and deliver the lecture that way. It's a great device for teachers and all of their files can be accessed via a cloud storage system like OneDrive. It runs everything they'll need and it's much easier to whip out to sign a form, check a calendar, mark a student's work or reply to an email. It's impressive to see what a college professor with a PhD in cybersecurity was able to accomplish without a computer. Now, does that mean that the iPad replaced his laptop as a programmer? Definitely not. But as a student that did study software engineering and computer science, I never found myself bringing my laptop anymore. I was super motivated to use the note-taking apps like Notability or GoodNotes to take all of my notes. I do wish I had paired this up with a paper-like sheet back in the day. Not only that, but their pencil grip set is pretty nice to put on this pen. Everything overall can very much level up your note-taking experience. Being able to transform this 60Hz LCD display and a ProMotion display to mimic the feel of paper and sound is such a plus. You generally get a lot more control of your pencil when taking notes on an app like GoodNotes, mainly due to the paper-like resistance and roughness. It can make your handwriting look much better, like that when you have the need to print your assignments, your teachers will understand them. It's a protector that is gentle with your Apple Pencil tips. I like the fact that Paper-like offer money-back guarantee for the first 100 days, and I love that it reduces the glare and fingerprints when manipulating any iPad. Overall, I would do assignments, sign project sheets, and contribute to Google Doc projects all within the iPad. These are the sort of things a computer does not deliver. The best part is that when it came to studying my notes, it was super simple to multitask, all while connected to a monitor. But again, it's still a tablet at the end of the day that only delivers basic functionality. One thing I do admire is Google Docs. I was never a fan of using their web-based app and it's why I always refer to their standalone app within the App Store. It's not laggy. The tools you need to get up and running on, say, a shared project for school are very much available to you. When it comes to Office 365 apps, well, it's a whole different story. I think the most complaints I saw about the iPad was how clunky Office 365 apps are, to the point that people just give up on their iPad transition, although I must say all of their suites does open extremely fast on iPadOS. Plus, multitasking can be easily done by tapping on these three dots. You can move your Office app over and open Word, for example. Like a desktop, the middle bar allows you to drag and resize the windows. Clicking on a blank document and typing it all happens very fast without any hesitation. You can open a couple of Word files at the same time, have them side by side, and even have other instances running in the background. The app shelf will help you manage all of them. The app shelf, by the way, is very similar to the dock on macOS, where it just stacks your current software instances. Only appears when you have hidden windows of the same program running in the background. Word is not the only Office app that can do all of this. Of course, Excel, OneNote, Outlook, and even PowerPoint can do it all, except for the Office 365 Hub, which makes sense. Just like your desktop computers, some apps like the Adobe Creative Suite won't even allow you to run multiple instances. Excel though, Excel is the one people complain the most about. It very much delivers the basics and that's about it. The cool thing is that downloading any sheet online is super easy and integrates well with the app when opening it. Cursor supports works, hovering over text, and double clicking on a word will highlight it. You can format text, add shapes, text boxes, and even write with a pencil. Even Excel formulas can be used. And to top it all off, holding command will reveal a list of the shortcuts you can use on the app. Now, if you start diving into programming your own formulas and creating code snippets with VBA and complex shards, this is where the app dies for most people. A ton of people have issues with Excel because they can't use plugins or even use macro scripting. Lots of the regular stuff is absolutely possible, but as soon as you need specific stuff, you might run into limitations. I'd say the most complicated thing you can do is inserting and editing a chart. You can easily create a table with data and generate what you need. Although even at that, throughout my research, I did notice a Reddit user complaining about not being able to do specific tasks on a graph. 
There were also users saying that even PowerPoint is really only used to review, not to edit. It can edit, but it's such a bad experience. Outlook, Teams, and OneNote are the strongest experiences on iPad, I think. Outlook does what you need it to do, and Teams and OneNote are excellent in my opinion. OneNote makes total sense since note-taking and drawing is the iPad's strongest selling point. Unlike coding, look, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like you can code on the iPad. VS Code recently launched their latest web app project on VS Code.dev, and while that's fine at all, you can't build a proper project on that. I'll leave their docs in the description down below, but essentially, it's a text editor that can allow you to bring in your work from a repo that can sync your current desktop extensions. It is a multiple window editor, some shortcuts like Command B work, but as soon as you get fancy with them, the browser shortcuts override what VS Code was looking for. A full dev environment is just not possible mainly when we know for a fact that the terminal isn't available on the iPad. It goes so far that some extensions like C++ won't work on iPad. I would love to be able to code on it, but it's just not possible. Heck, some people claim that if they could code front-end from the iPad, they will legit just do everything from that thing. The ability to code and compile, manage your files through a complete file manager, and being able to at least SSH into other devices is not possible. Therefore, for professional use, I still find these devices are extremely limited. Hard to justify the laptop and desktop replacement. The fun thing is that this thing can game. It's very easy to get things up and running with a controller to play games. Even when connected to the Apple Studio display, it delivers an enjoyable gaming experience. I've been playing around with the Xbox Game Pass, and the fun thing about this is that you can connect your account to the iPad. This allows you to game on their hosted machines, and it can be very fun. You have access to their huge games library, and all of your progress does get saved in the cloud. I very much like it and I admire how easy the iPad makes it to get some of your gaming out of the way. For the most part, it can replace an Apple device, but definitely not a Windows computer. Look, from my own personal experience and the research I've done, the iPad is all about delivering basic and simple functionality to get you to a certain point. It can be a device that can work for a lot of people, but for the majority of us, as of now, it's more of a perfect companion. To me, it's still not a device that can replace your desktop computer, even though it can look like one. I won't deny the fact that I've enjoyed my iPad experience these past Past few years and it's why I still like keeping them around. Let me know in the comments what iPad you are currently rocking. I'm signing out. Peace.